I've had literally dozens of recruiters approach me with data analyst opportunities on LinkedIn over the last three years. And I'm not special. I don't have tons of experience or insane case studies down my sleeve. I haven't worked at a fang company or anything like that. But you know what I do have is an optimized LinkedIn profile. And today I'm sharing how to design a LinkedIn page that becomes a magnet for job opportunities. And when your profile is optimized, you can start sending out resumes and be sure that they'll get noticed. If your resume is not fully ready for the job hunt yet, download my free data analyst resume template in the description below. Let's begin. So for this video, I'll be referencing my own experience as well as this study by Sarah Johnston who analyzed 5,000 plus LinkedIn users and what she found was pretty mind blowing. So I'll be referencing her article often throughout this video. And let's start with just a quick LinkedIn profile reality check. So in her article on maximizing LinkedIn impact, Sarah Johnston shares a shocking statistic statistic, 65% of users contact others based on what they see from their LinkedIn profiles. This just goes to show how powerful a LinkedIn profile can be. But most data analysts are completely missing the mark with their profiles. So one big problem is that many of these profiles are too generic or too broad. What I found today is that simply targeting the role data analyst doesn't really cut it much anymore. Data analyst has become more of an umbrella term more than anything at this point. Now there are are actual data analysts job titles, but there's so much more in the realm of data analysis that when you market yourself as a jack of all trades, general data analyst, sometimes you can miss the mark. And another thing that people are often missing is not sharing enough impact. Their profiles only go skin deep. And we'll share a little bit more about this later, but in general, you need to stand out. This means being different, being interesting, and showcasing your expertise in a captivating way. So throughout my career, one thing I've done is I've continually niched down on Power BI as my tool of choice and being a Power BI developer as my role of choice. Essentially, I've gone down this path of business intelligence rather than just marketing myself as a data analyst. And when I have just tried to market myself as a data analyst or have a resume that is just all encompassing of all sorts of data analyst skills, I often missed the mark and didn't hear back from recruiters. But when I started to niche down in this way with Power BI, I started seeing more and more opportunities come my way. Now, that doesn't mean everyone watching this should just go become an expert at Power BI. But the point is to try to start narrowing your focus onto a specific set of skills that you enjoy and that you have the most experience in. And if you don't have that experience, start developing that experience with focus. So much of this video will be around LinkedIn optimization and best practices regarding LinkedIn. But if you want more of a step-by-step -step tutorial on putting together your LinkedIn profile, I recommend checking out this video here after watching this video for the creation of the profile itself. So now I'd like to move on to the LinkedIn headline. So another surprising statistic from Sarah's article is that 46% of users say that your headline is more important than experience. That to me was pretty mind blowing to hear. Now I've always known that the headline is important, but I didn't realize it was that important. And I believe this is because your headline is your first impression and first impressions matter, especially on LinkedIn. So let's break down the anatomy of a really good data analyst headline. So in general, the best headlines tell someone immediately who you are and what you do. So for our purposes in data analytics, I recommend stating your target role or niche. An example could be business intelligence analyst. Even if you don't work as a business intelligence analyst yet, if that's your target role, that's what you should put as the first thing in your headline. I follow that up with a few keywords for target job descriptions, whether that's Power BI, SQL, Python, whatever your thing is and whatever you're targeting. And lastly, I would add some kind of value proposition. So an example, could be I create self-service reporting, blending data and design, some kind of value prop statement that helps you stand out and explain what you do. Let's talk about some bad headlines. So what you don't want to do is stuff a bunch of keywords and buzzwords. Now this used to be a reliable strategy and I've even shared about it in the past. In fact, the other video I mentioned, I think I talk about this a little bit, but I found that now it's a bit overdone. Instead, stick to value propositions and narrow it down to just a few strong keywords. You also don't want to settle for LinkedIn defaults, like just having your title and company, data analyst at ABC company, unless it's like a FANG company, because anyone who puts FANG or XFANG in their headline is instantly a LinkedIn.
LinkedIn star. But assuming that's not you, don't bother putting that in your LinkedIn headline. Another thing is that you don't wanna make your headline too wordy. Keep it to short statements like the one I mentioned in regards to value props. And lastly, you don't wanna make it too generic. Again, just data analysts with a bunch of random buzzwords. Try to niche down and narrow your focus. And now I wanna dive into crafting an irresistible about section. So one statistic that may surprise you is that 85% of people read at least the first sentence of a LinkedIn about section. Now that was surprising to me because I rarely do that, but it's good to know that most people do. I've always advocated for optimizing your about section, but this just goes to show how valuable it really is. This means it's an area we want to leverage. Another interesting metric is that 56% of LinkedIn users like reading fun facts or personal details. Now I know this specific detail from the article, but this is another thing I've always been a huge advocate for. What you don't want to do is treat your LinkedIn about section like some kind of generic resume summary. You have way more real estate to work with and people will actually read it. And we know that people will actually read it. So make it fun and interesting. Show your quirky self, show a little bit of personality, add those fun facts and personal details. Tell some kind of story to captivate your reader. And that brings me to some ways you can approach your about section. So again, storytelling, taking a storytelling approach. I've done this many times and I think it's a great way to go. Another thing is making it personal. So don't be afraid to share details about your life and interests and things like that. You'll want to walk through your career journey and your achievements. And this will vary depending on how much experience you have and what your background is. But walking through your career journey and taking them on that journey using storytelling is a great way to go. And finally, you want to write in the first person. So Sarah's study showed that 78% of people prefer to see this. And besides, writing about yourself in the third person is just weird. So again, keep it personal, write in the first person. Next, let's talk about the experience section. So this is obviously a really big piece of your LinkedIn profile, but like your resume, you want to convey impact. I'd recommend adding three or so bullet points per role, highlighting things you did using action words. You can even copy and paste this directly from your resume if it makes sense. And another thing is don't be afraid to tweak job titles. So if your job title was like junior business associate or something like that, which means absolutely nothing, don't be afraid to change it to something a little more descriptive of the role you actually had and give it an analytical flair. Sometimes people could feel weird about tweaking job titles, but job titles can be so incredibly arbitrary and dumb that take those creative liberties if they make sense. You don't want to straight up lie, but you can shift the wording a little bit to something that makes sense. I've seen this done often and it's quite effective. When it comes to LinkedIn engagement, there's a lot to discuss here. So the days of treating LinkedIn like an online resume are long gone. LinkedIn is a true networking platform and you can't network without engagement. You also won't be noticed without some sort of LinkedIn presence via engagement. This is how I've come to be noticed by so many recruiters over the years. And the way I see it, there are three main components to LinkedIn engagement. The first is posting, the second is commenting, and the third is DMs. All of these are some form of engagement and I recommend doing each of them as consistently as possible. Volume will always be secondary to consistency, but the more you can engage, the better. So let's break all three of these down. Posting is your broadcast to the world. But the most common problems that I see are people not knowing what to post about. Very valid. Also, when people have never posted before, they could feel really nervous about posting. But one rule that I live by with LinkedIn is that nobody remembers a bad post, people will only remember the good posts, and even then, they're probably not even gonna remember a good post. People are ingesting so much information that it's very unlikely that they're gonna hold on to what you said and never forget it. Unless it was something truly impactful, which usually comes from a good post. Anyways, there's a few different things you can talk about. You can share about your journey and just be transparent, almost treating it like a blog. You can share stuff that you're learning and you don't have to be an expert to talk about what you're learning. The third is showcasing your work, sharing projects, walking through your portfolio, giving visual examples of your work. This is often a really great thing to share on LinkedIn because people love to see those visual examples and you can get some free feedback. The next is commenting. So commenting is a way to connect with others and establish a presence in other people's networks. And what I recommend is taking like five to 10 people that you want to engage with daily or as often as you're on LinkedIn and just consistently comment on their posts. This could be people you want to connect with, people with bigger networks,
networks than you that you want to kind of get involved in. But commenting is a way to connect with others and to have more reach in the LinkedIn universe. And the third aspect of engagement is DMs. And this is how you form a personal connection with people. Now, I never recommend just messaging someone you've never once interacted with and asking for resume review or something like that. That is a really quick way to be ignored. But this is where commenting and DMing can work in conjunction. So whether you're responding to comments on your posts or you're commenting on someone else's posts regularly, this is a way that you break the ice. And once you've had some kind of back and forth interaction on posts, that's a good opportunity to maybe send a DM. And I would keep it very casual. Mention something you saw in their post that stood out to you. Mention something about their profile that stood out to you. Approach wanting to lift them up in some kind of way. Now there's a time and place for shooting your shot and maybe asking for a coffee chat or something like that. But in general, this is a long-term strategy and you just wanna take a very casual approach to DMing to begin that relationship. Here's what a typical LinkedIn session looks like for me. First is I respond to any remaining comments on my previous day's posts. The second is I post. The third is I comment on five to 10 posts from other people, preferably those with big networks of their own. Though I'll often engage with people I just want to get to know regardless of their following size. Fourth, I circle back to my own post and respond to all comments. This whole process takes about 15 minutes as long as I already have my post prepared. And I recommend batch writing your posts before the week begins and just scheduling them out. This will save you a lot of headache throughout the week and LinkedIn has a native feature for scheduling so you don't have to buy any third-party tools. Okay, next let's move on to keywords and skills. So strategically placing keywords throughout your profile can improve your visibility to recruiters and hiring managers. This is referred to as keyword density. And keyword density refers to how often a keyword appears relative to the total number of words in a document. And while there's still a lot we don't know about the LinkedIn algorithm, Sarah's article shows that in crafting LinkedIn profiles, the best practice is incorporating the keyword or phrase that you want at least nine times throughout the profile to balance optimization and readability. As far as which keywords to choose, that largely depends on the types of roles you're going for. But you can grab these from a target job description and load up your profile with those keywords. I also wanna highlight that individuals with at least five skills listed receive 17 times more views. That's insane because five is a really low bar. I mean, if you don't have at least five skills on your profile, then like, what are you doing? You should have as many skills as you can. I'm talking like 50 plus. And again, you wanna be realistic. You don't wanna just be straight up lying. You wanna have familiarity with the tool, but including as many as you can, it's a good way to go. A powerful LinkedIn profile combined with a professional resume is what will make recruiters chase you instead of the other way around. It's a competitive market, but having both of these things will help you stand out. And for more insight on how to put together a LinkedIn profile step-by-step, step, check out one of my other videos on LinkedIn profile optimization here. Thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.